Okay, take two, because the first version was 20 minutes long, and it was a little bit too based, and there might have been some Fed posting in there, so I will keep that out of it. Definitely don't Fed post in the comments. The Fed post is a, a threat of, uh, of harm sufficient such that you can, uh, a state officer can get a search warrant out for arrest warrant out for you, or bypassing that is something called exigent circumstances. You don't want any contact with the state. You don't need to say what needs, ooh, this is already sounding way too based. You don't need to say what doesn't need to be said. So for your own safety and my safety, you don't need to say that kind of stuff. It doesn't matter if you're on Telegram or you're on these other based matrix sites. You never need to put in print what doesn't need to be said. It doesn't do you any good. And honestly, it looks a little glowy. But, I, you know, I'm assuming you're not. I'm assuming, like, this, assume everything's up on the level. You just don't need to say those kind of things that would, that would give the state grounds to get involved under any circumstances. The reason I say such a weird intro is because if you see this video, and I'll read the text in a sec, you're going to want to you're going to get a little frustrated. You might say something that in context is obviously joking, but, um, you know, the state doesn't see it that way. So let me read this text in case you're not watching. The Teachers Exposed channel on Twitter. I'm on Twitter probably for the next two weeks until I get kicked off because I am just I am just being a troll like you wouldn't. You can go to my Twitter and read it if you want. It's funny. It's trolly. And to be fair, it's pretty offensive. So um, Teachers Exposed. The goal of the transition closet is for our students to wear the clothes that their parents approve of, come to school, and then swap out into the clothes that fit who they truly are. So this is a 40-year-old teacher with an earring, a soy boy, who's talking about deceiving parents and doing things with kids surreptitiously behind their backs kid things that the parents disagree with the parents raise the kids not the teachers that's the difference between nationalists and globalists is they believe the state raises the kid we believe the parents raise the kid yes it might take a village to help raise a kid but when we say that we mean your blood tribe your uncles and aunts and all that kind of stuff your extended family um your tribe not a bunch of these parasitical vermin who uh, I wouldn't trust with a house plant, much less a child. Anything you, anytime you're doing something behind someone's the parents' back, um, see that's why I gave the warning not to Fed post because there's a tendency to say some things humorously, you know, humorous. So don't say, and I won't say it either, though it's really hard not to. Anyway, so we're at the stage of Weimar, where the teachers are turning out to be the enemy. I guess it's more like um, Mao's China. And, you know, really, this is the time to really read some history. And uh, a little bit of Aristotle talking about the rise of the shipping class and the currency exchangers and then you know what happened in, in china and north korea and well maybe not north korea but china and russia is probably more um appropriate so um the, where the teachers turn out to be you know just puppets of tools of the states and people say oh just homeschool well here's the thing the globalists structured the country and the culture such that it's very difficult to do nowadays because they devalue the dollar and we can start with one historical point 1965 Hart Seller Act, and there's a lot of points you can go to before that. I mean, it's a never-ending series of points going all the way back to Andrew Jackson, the Bankers' War, and you can go back further than that if you want, thousands of years. The thing is, um, this, what happened was it raised housing costs and it lowered the value of labor, and like even communists should understand that if you bring in more low-skilled labor, well, what happens to the value of that? Oh, oh, well, it's not an equal-sum game. Yeah, but in practice, what actually happened to the value, the cost of housing? Oh, it's because we didn't do it. But, um, you know, even like in terms of carbon footprint and environmentalism, when you when Europe is doing this too, bringing in uh, third world people into Europe, it's like, so what happens to the carbon footprint of these people if they'd stayed in the third world? It would be low, and because they're coming into Europe, it's going to be high. Oh, well, we're going to have trains, and we're going to... Yeah, but in practice, what happens? The goal isn't... The goal is to change one group for another group. I'm trying to put this on YouTube, and that's I think you can read in between the lines. Um, the goal is not, whatever they say the goal is, is not what the goal is. The goal is to make the rich richer and to change out one group of people for a group of people who are more easily led. Is that too base for YouTube? I don't know. Um, so I think most people understand that when you, you bring in more of something, like what happens with them, the dollar? 
I know there's a lot of PhDs in mathematics who discuss finance, and you go, well, at a, at a basic level, what happens when you print more of these paper uh, unit pieces of, of paper that have value, you know, fiat currency? What happens if you print more of them? Well, the, the value of it goes down, <laughs> right? I mean, like at a child's level, oh, no, well, actually, what we're going to do is it's going to go into assets and... So then why are you printing more of it? Wouldn't it be better if you just didn't print more of this paper, like if you had a cap on how much you could print? Like, wouldn't it be better if you didn't? No, no, no. Okay, but in practice, what's happening? Oh, well, in practice, we have something called inflation. Okay, so that's what's actually happening. So your theory is one thing, and inflation is the reality. Yeah, but because we didn't do it right. So all these theories are working. It doesn't matter what the theory is. It matters what is empirically happening and what's happening is, well, you lower the value of labor, you raise housing costs, and you increase inflation. And also you lower the European-American birth rate because of these. There's a big totality of circumstances. And honestly, it's like it's more like a two-hour uh, live stream conversation. I would love to talk some. I, the thing is, I know there are guys on my Telegram who are experts at this. Eventually, I'm going to have to do a live stream with these guys um, and get that going because... Uh, to do live streams, you just kind of have to start and get pra- you know get the techs work the technical stuff worked out, and just you know it just takes practice to get to get the stuff down. Anyway, the point is, all these pieces of the puzzle work together. These globalist puppet teachers are doing this, this stuff that you're finally seeing, this accelerationism, because they can finally get away with it, and that's kind of what it is. It's like both sides are stepping on the gas. There is no break for this train. America learned that diversity is weakness. I mean, literally what the word means, it means conflict. And they use this tall grass theory to hide snakes. It sounds like a dog whistle. It's because it is. Because of this influx of labor, husband and wives found out that they needed to work. And the birth rates dropped, or the European-American birth rates dropped drastically. America is in deep doo-doo. If you look at the demographics in 1955, and America had a certain standard of living in 1955 relative to the rest of the world, it was a first world nation in uh, 55. Uh, it's no longer, at least in comparison. First world nations are like Japan, South Korea, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, uh, New Zealand, stuff like that. America, if you look around, it's like the ultra wealthy live well in America, to be fair, but the average Japanese has a a standard of living that the average American um, doesn't have and will never have again. Like, that ship has sailed for uh, (laughs) the SS Liberty America. That's another dog whistle, but I'm sure y'all got that. America's in deep shit, is what I'm trying to say. The thing is, um, and there are a lot of other points, but as a rough approach, we can focus on that one 1965 Hard Seller Act. My point is, they manipulated the West in so many different ways. We are swimming in the sea of globalist propaganda. If you allow... Let me edit on the fly. Um, Bad people. That's not quite the word I'm looking for. I'll say globalists. To run your ad agencies. People who have an interest adverse to the nation. The European Americans who were going in one direction. Or at least they thought they were going in one direction. But, you know, it's constant. The price of liberty is is constant vigilance. Um, You have to constantly train that pit bull if you want good behavior from it. Uh, it, You can't... It's like, I don't know, it's like a kid around a swimming pool. You can't take your eyes off the kid on the swimming pool for a second. Or it's like playing with a, you know, target practice with a gun. It's like a gun is a different device than any other device. You're If you've never, it's something you don't, you don't lose focus for an instant when you're at a, a target range type of thing or you're hunting, whatever it's. It's a different type of thing. And like, that's kind of how the country was too. If you lose focus then people who have focus, it's kind of game theory, people who have focus, have anger preference, will slowly seize key nodes and infrastructure pivot points. Um, and you'll find yourself like, oh, we thought we were running this country in 1955. Well, you were, and then you weren't. And it happens pretty quickly if you ra- allow globalists to take Hollywood, media, financial institutions, ad agencies, things that have influence, city councils, school boards, mayors, you know, government officials, the power, the low district attorneys, judges, the power behind the power. Um, and you don't have a country anymore. The country's over. And it might take a hundred years, but it's written in stone unless you remove them from um, positions. The thing is, it keeps coming back to globalist diversity versus tribal nationalism. It's, it's uh, politically incorrect to say this, 
because we've been so brainwashed for 80 years that we shy away from the truth. We recoil in horror when we describe the things before us because we've been taught that it's wrong think. And we almost need an autistic approach to this to just look at things and describe them fairly and accurately. Who are the parties involved? What are their motivations? Follow the money. Who does it benefit? Ask the basic questions and pretend that you don't have that political correctness, which is easy for me to do because I've been making these videos and every time I make the videos, get, I get a little bit closer to the, I get a little bit further down the rabbit hole, a little bit less politically correct, which is why, like you talk to people on Telegram and you'll be almost shocked by how based it is because people on Telegram are already going, they've already been down the, the rabbit hole. So it's like, there's not a lot of normies on, um, on Telegram where even on Gab, like there are, there's a surprising amount of normies. Like there's, there's probably 1% on Gab who's super far right based down the rabbit hole, but there's a lot of MAGA normies on Gab. And our job on Gab is not to build the N-word towers. That's completely fucking useless. It is to slowly and gently, with our logic and our rhetoric and facts and evidence, bring talk to these people in the language that they are comfortable hearing and moving them respectfully and carefully to the right. Not just to, you know, post pointless memes kind of things. The thing is, it's, so it's this globalist versus tribal nationalism and um, washing off brainwashing. The thing is, globalism has been designed to destroy the nation state. That's the goal of it for a long time. It was designed to create a master-slave relationship. They want to be the only tribe within group preferences. It will allow them to rule over a weaker, larger group that doesn't have in-group preferences. It's kind of game theory, or maybe it's kind of like R and K selection, but for human cultural psychology or something. Um, and it's a two thousand year old game because even Aristotle and Shakespeare were talking about it. I did a I did a video for Aristotle talking about the arise of shipping and the need for currency exchange. People who are um, speak multiple languages. I forgot the word for that. Poly, polyglot, I think. Um, people could convert people who are kind of the internationalists. So if you, and banks and the rise of banks. And then people started to look at that and realize like, oh, you've just created a new system of power to take it away from a nation state of a blood tribe of one people. Like, oh, this is a Spanish village. We're all, we're all, we all know that who we are. We are one people. And the king has power and, you know, we've, you've got people you went to war with and that kind of stuff, but it's like we're one people and then there's a certain power system in place and then with shipping and with bankers and currency exchange, it's like, oh, that's the real power behind the scenes because they're, you need a place to store money and if you have a place to store money, you've got a group of sophisticated, it's like with contract negotiations, one of the defenses contract um, formation is like an unconscionable uh, meeting of the minds where one party is so much more sophisticated than another party. And if you've got some podunk village, it's like, how do you sell your village out to this banker? It's like, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Cause there's an unequal bargaining position. You've got an international banker who speaks five languages and can do, you know, calculus in his head and is, is able to move money around the world dealing with some little backwater village. It's like, Oh, those Kings didn't have to borrow money. That's an unconscionable bargaining position because you get people who are just not educated at the same level. Anyway, the thing is, this is an old plan. Uh, it goes back a long way, but they pretty much have the game won. At least, I think most people know that who have been paying attention. To win now for us would um, require a massive amount of red pills for the bread and circuses cl uh, crowd who still watches the Super Bowl, plays video games, and you know, wants their their fast food ordered in and wants 24-hour interracial gangbang porns on demand, all that kind of... Like anyone who watches the Super Bowl, um, that kind of crowd, we got to gently red pill those people. And, and war, if I'm being perfectly honest, because uh, there's no way around that. Uh, slave masters don't want to give up the power. And, you know, in this case, it's like, it's just one liberal BLT teacher. Why are you touch grass, my guy? Yikes, my guy. Why so pressed? No, it's it's not just one teacher. If you're on Twitter or Gab, you can see this stuff. Or Telegram, you see there's no end to this uh, type of thing. It's CRT, Gar Garland, Garfinkel. Uh, I, I guess he was changed his name when after he came from Russia. And Weingarten, the teacher... Uh, union head headboard um, going after parents who were not on board with globalist anti-white propaganda 
You can't have a nation with them in it. Do you want a state that respects and upholds the European people? If yes, you can't have anti-white people in it. Most normies don't want to cross that Rubicon. Just getting them to accept and use the term anti-white is a challenge, but deep down they know it's accurate. But it's a line in the sand for them because it identifies a problem. The next step is you have to do something about it. Once you start looking at this anti-white issue, you go from leaf to twig to branch to trunk to roots. It's dealing with an issue most people just do not want to bother. They want someone else to handle it. Some some well-spoken, you know, chiseled jaw person to get the thing going for them where they can just sit on their couch and maybe they can make a small donation to my coffee account now and then but they're hoping someone else is gonna is gonna handle it for them they don't want to put down the video game the sports ball the high fructose corn syrup type of thing that's not going to happen um there's no one coming to save us and there's that's a kind of a longer video on the technology that prevents if you control big tech then you can prevent the next uh, you could prevent the next Jesus Christ if you wanted to. No offense, I don't mean that in a blasphemous way. I mean the next big speaker, if you control the means of communication. There's um, people in, in, I don't know, uh, France were showing a telegram video of, uh, they're at some protest, and uh, they're showing, it's there's like a thousand people at this protest. And then you go to the city's live cameras, and the live camera is showing an old feed. It shows like 50 people in this in this pl- this building, this uh, street, street corner. It's like the live, they're, they're ho- guy's holding up his cell phone. It shows 50 people. And they're there live. And he goes, yeah, this is, this is what happened when you, you control the dissemination of information. You control everything. But that's why you've got to get on Telegram. You've got to get on Gab. And um, what was the other one? Odyssey. Um, anyway, the thing is, um, the point of globalism is that the belief that the state owns the child, not the parent. We believe the parent owns the child. Well, it's a weird way. The, the parent gets to decide the child's education. And ultimately, the best way to do that is homeschool or have a small neighborhood nationalist-based, you know, Europa-based school, whatever, whatever you're into. If you're, you want to focus on Christianity, you want to focus on Europa, paganist-type stuff, you know, whatever. But you, the parents are in control of uh, deciding what the kid needs to learn, not these type of lizard people. These are just, you know, um, don't fed post in the comments. These are bad people. But the thing is, you don't, you go, well, I'm paying taxes to send the kid to school. You know, property taxes are paying for the kid. It's education. It's like, yeah, you have a representative right. Like, you should know that when you're sending the kids to school. I mean, really, at this point, there should be cameras in the school. And everything should be above board. And um, the, the schools right now are doing everything they can to hide the curriculum from the parents. The the one the good thing about Wooflu is that because kids were learning on tablets and Zoom calls and stuff, that parents started to see what was being taught to the kids. And they looked at it and were like, oh, this, this, <laughs> this CRT stuff is anti-white. We can't have our kids being brainwashed with this cultural Marxism. The thing is, it's important to use those kind of words. It's important to have a nomenclature where you can attach words to these things and simply look at these people and say, oh, this is um, anti-white propaganda. Because it kind of puts it out in the forefront. And you've got Weingarten and Garfinkel explaining why it's not anti-white propaganda. And then you start talking about bias. And it, it opens the door to a discussion where you just, instead of saying like, oh, we don't want our kids being taught this. It's like, uh, anyway, um, the thing is, the parents should control the dissemination of information, the education of their kids, not these these kind of vermin parasites. I'll leave it at that. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys all next episode.